Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about this beast right here. And this beast is Makita's 40 volt XGT 10 and a quarter inch rear handle brushless circular saw. We've had a chance to use it. Uh, we're gonna do some tests with it and stuff like that, but we did use it. We're gonna go over it top to bottom, stick with us. All right, you guys, so this right here is Makita's GSR-02 saw, okay? You can buy the saw as a bare tool or a kit. If you buy it as a bare tool, it's GSR-02Z. If you buy it as a kit, it's GSR-02M1. And when you buy it as a kit, it comes with a four amp hour XGT battery and a charger and obviously the saw and stuff like that. But uh, that's what you were to get. And if you do buy it as a kit, it will only come with a four amp hour battery right now at the time of this recording. I'm not sure if they're gonna make any more kits or whatnot not that but um, you do have to use I would say at least a four amp hour battery or higher mainly because if I remember everything correctly only the four amp hour battery and the higher capacity ones use the 21700 series cells right the 2.5 amp hour XGT battery I believe at this time currently uses 18650 cells so make sure you keep that in mind okay anyways obviously this is a large capacity saw right 10 and a quarter inch that's not that's not a small saw right so it's, if a standard blade is seven and a quarter inch, right? This saw blade uses a blade that's about three inches longer, okay? So it allows you to get some of the deeper cuts in one, or bigger cuts in like one pass, right? You could cut a four by four or four by six in one pass instead of having to, you know, cut it and flip it and cut stuff like that. So obviously this saw comes in use if you're doing a lot of that kind of work. It's not the saw you would pick up on a, on a regular basis unless that's the kind of work that you're doing. But anyways, let's bring you in closer, look at the marketing material, and then we'll bring you in closer and put it on track. All right, so this saw right here uses Makita's brushless motor, okay? Makita built this brushless motor and it delivers a whopping 4,000 RPMs, okay? They claim that it cuts faster than corded. We're gonna eventually see if that's really true or not. It has digital communications on the XGT platform to optimize performance, okay? So it kind of communicates a little bit between the battery and the tool to say, okay, try to figure out how to get the maximum performance and it will deliver that performance under heavy load or heavy duty load applications, okay? Um, like all Makita stuff, it uses the XBT uh, technology to increase uh, protection against dust, water resistance, and job site conditions. And this saw will cut three and three quarters of an inch at 90 degrees and two and three quarters of an inch at 45 degrees. And if you do bevel it all the way to 56 degrees, it will cut about two and one eighths of an inch, okay? So that's a pretty large cutting capacity. And according to the marketing material, it says it will cut up to 150 cuts per charge in four by four, okay? Uh, it bevels up to 56 degrees, has positive softs like they're 22.5 and 45, like standard Makita um, circular saws, ergonomic handle, and it will weigh in at whopping 13.3 pounds, okay? They claim that's lighter than corded, um, up to 3.2 pounds lighter than corded. So obviously, um, it's a heavy saw, but it's, it's a light for its class or whatnot. It does have automatic torque drive technology, which does change the cutting speed under load for optimum cutting performance. If you've been keeping up with the videos, you notice that some of the saws will have like a like a LED vid LED somewhere on the saw that kind of like lights up, right? Blinks green or off or solid green or whatnot. This saw does do that, but I have not seen the LED anywhere, but it does have that. It also has electronic brake for maximum uh, safety. It has AWS, means auto wireless start or auto start wireless, not to be confused with AWS web system from Amazon, okay? And that uses Bluetooth technology to turn the dust collection system on and off um, wirelessly between the saw and the dust collection system, but you do have to buy that chip separately. The saw is capable, but the, the chip for it is not included. If you did want to buy the auto start wireless transmitter, the part number for that is 198901-5. And you do have to buy that separately, like I said. Um, it has die cast magnesium base, blade guard, and blade cover, which really helps with this lightweight design. Um, it has an onboard offset wrench for faster blade changes. And it is nice because I guess they did learn from their first generation of the things that they made that um, the GSR, no, or the XSR01, which did not have onboard blade wrench storage, this one does, okay? Extra wide um, 
a rafter hook that allows you to hook on like like bigger pieces of lumber and things like that. And obviously the XGT platform protects the tool and the batteries and stuff against overload, over discharge and overheating. And the XGT stuff, you know, gets into all this marketing material about like multi-layer contact interface and high current demand and all kinds of stuff. Anyways, the point is that it uses the Makita's 40 volt XGT batteries and the uh, tool is warranted for three years, okay? seems pretty standard it uses the five eighths inch arbor and um i mean that's really it right so let's bring you in closer and take a better look at it all right so one of the first things you'll see when you look at this saw is obviously this large side handle and it is a threaded large side handle that makita does include and it is fairly nice because it helps provide a lot more like lateral stability and stuff like that um, and it's got two edges on here that's not completely rounded off so it will stay on a uh, surface and not roll off, you know? It reminds you a little bit of a, like a grinder handle and that's pretty much what it looks like, um, except it won't obviously roll off. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna keep it barely screwed in so we can mess with it a little bit later, okay? I do recommend you do use it because it does help with stability. So starting with this business part of the saw here, right? Um, this base is magnesium, the guard or the cover and the guard is magnesium. It's a pretty darker shade than their like light shade of silver or whatnot. It's more like a darker gray, okay? Um, it does include this Makita Max Efficiency 24 tooth blade when you are using it, okay? It is a 10 and a quarter inch blade and it uses 24 carbide teeth. Um, for some reason, when I was using it, I really started thinking, man, I wish this, this blade had a little bit more teeth, maybe like 48 teeth or whatnot. So yeah, it's, it's a framing blade. It's not a finished blade by any means, but it's a 10 and a, half, a quarter inch blade, right? So it, I feel like it needs more teeth in order to either make it smoother or make it not necessarily faster, but more smoother. Um, for some reason, I felt like when you're pushing it really fast, that it would benefit um, from a lot of that. If you do look at the blade, you can kind of see there's large gaps between there to take larger chunks of wood out so it can get around faster. Um, obviously, uh, more teeth will definitely make it slower, seem slower, so maybe I'm sure they did something to, to find the balance in there. Anyways, to use a standard 5 8 inch arbor, so that's obviously interesting. Um, and here is right here is where you would find the uh, depth adjustment guide, right? So this saw at 90 degrees will cut three and three quarters of an inch um, and at 45 I believe it's two and three quarters of an inch and it's a pretty standard adjustment that they have going on here. It's nice because this uh, piece right here is rubber or over molded rubbery, right? Standard. So if you did, if you use a lot of Makita saws, I mean, it's going to feel right at home because it's like almost exact like design of like their rear handle saws, right? Except it's just scaled out a little bit bigger. Uh, one thing I did notice on here, maybe I'm just like nitpicking is that this one right here is the only one that is uh, rubber over molded, right? Like for instance, this uh, blade guard right here is standard metal. There's no over mold on there. The lever um, for the uh, beveling guide is not over molded and stuff like that. So I feel like it would have been nice if they kind of, you know, just took the extra step and did that, but you know, we're not gonna nitpick too much on that front part right there, okay? Um, if you do look at it, um, there is a rip guide uh, fence where you can put in right here. It obviously does not inc include one or come with one, or the wing bolt is also not included with it, okay? So if you do uh, get one, um, obviously you can go ahead and get one. I'll leave a link in the description below for the one that I use. I use the uh, Bosch Worm Drive Rip Guide Fence, um, designed for the Bosch saw, mainly because I just always had that one around. I mean, if we do use it, but we don't use it all the time. Um, you do have to buy the bolt for that separately. And it's not the one that comes with the Bosch Worm Drive one because that bolt is a little bit different thread than this one, okay? So make sure you keep that in mind. So let's go around to the front here because this is also the second business part, right? Um, for using it, if I'm using it, I, I saw the line of sight is actually really good, uh, mainly because the saw is big, so there's a lot of open space, okay? And there is a like a zero line right here and obviously a um, like a triangular indent that goes right here. But because the saw is really big, you can really see really well line of sight from where you're standing if you're right-handed, okay? If you're left-handed, I'm sorry, you're just a little bit out of luck because your head's mostly gonna be on the back side of the saw. So line of sight is fairly good, okay? And if you, like I said, if you use Makita saws a lot, this is gonna be pretty standard. It's got positive detents for bevels and it is a single level bevel system, um, just like their XSR or other GSR rear handle saw, right? So you just flip the lever and you bevel the saw to where you need it to go, right? 
Like for instance, if I wanted to bevel this to 45 degrees, I would just take this knob, set it to 45, set the bevel and it will stop exactly at 45, right? Obviously you can lock it in, I'm not gonna do that, but um, it does bevel pretty well. Standard Makita stuff. The bevel um, levels or the guide or gauge or whatever you wanna call it, it's pretty standard. It's all like stamped in to uh, the shoe right here. So you don't actually have to worry about like stickers and stuff like that peeling off, although you don't see too many of those with that, okay? Um, the line of sight um, while we're in the front here for if you're cutting a 45 degree angle, is obviously right here, right next to it. Um, but like I said, most people, at least most people I know don't use that. They just kind of look at exactly where the blade is, okay? So on the front, that's what you really have going on, pretty standard. Let's go around to the other side, right? So here is the back or the rear part of the saw. And like most Makita saws, if you've used all the rear handle saws, it's pretty standard, right? It's got the safety lever button. It is in the So you can push it from one side or the other side um, for whatever reason, if you'd like to push it one way, that's fine. Um, and the safe and the trigger is right here, okay? There is a piece of plastic that, that separates the trigger finger uh, from the handle, right? So it, it's a little bit of a safety feature in case you hang a heater or something happens, doesn't get caught and, and kick the saw off. Uh, I think some people will dislike it, uh, but for me, I, I prefer it this way because I feel it's, it feels a little bit more stable and you're not squishing your fingers. You know, sometimes if you're wearing gloves, the gloves will get caught between the bottom part of this trigger and going in. I'm not sure if you ever experienced that, but it does happen to some people and some types of gloves, okay? So it is fairly nice. Um, there's no battery in it right now, so I can click it, right? But uh, pretty standard over mold there. All right, so going around to the back. So if you look at the back part of the saw, this motor looks, I want to say very similar if you've used the other Makita saws, except it just seems a little bit bigger, right? Um, and it does have a lot of power. We'll go ahead and, and, and get to testing somewhere soon. But before we get too far ahead, let's start from back here. Rafter hook is here, okay? And it's like a really a one position rafter hook. It's either open or, or available to use, right? And you can hang it or it's closed. It does not go anymore. It doesn't go all the way up. It doesn't have a positive stop right here. Um, it's here or here. Okay, so take it or leave it. Here's where you would put the, um, the auto start wireless chip. If you did buy one of those um, instructions to sync, it's obviously included. If you did buy it, and right here is where you would put the battery. Okay, so let me put this all down. Take this four amp hour battery, drop it here. And that's what it looks like when you have the battery installed, okay? Um, moving forward, obviously here is the motor. Uh, it doesn't, like dust doesn't seem to collect here, obviously. Um, I did use it most, a couple times without the dust collecting system on, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but the dust does not come out from here onto here, so you don't have to worry about that. It's got a pretty nice handle. Um, so if you were using it, like for some, whatever reason I was using it left-handed, right? It would go like this, and the battery does not get in the way. I'll show you in a second. And if I use it right-handed, the saw right-handed, the handle would go like that, right? So if, even if this is the four amp hour battery, handle, hand, battery, not in the way, okay? Unlike the Milwaukee one, the, if you use a 12 amp hour battery, that battery will be like up here and it'll be in the way, okay? So it's nice that this is not here, okay? Other thing you'll see, there is no LED light anywhere on here, okay? Um, we'll, we'll, we can get to that part in a second. So anyways, here right here is the dust collection port, okay? It comes with a pretty nice rubberized cap if you did not want to use the dust collection system, you just put it on there. If you did want to use it, um, you just hook your dust collection port to there. Um, so in my testing of it, uh, I'll throw up most of the videos or if all the videos that I'll probably throw up, you'll probably see that the dust collector is hooked up, okay? And my dust collection system is not the best one, but it does work generally pretty well. Um, and I feel like it doesn't really do anything, um, even if you cut at a relative speed, because most of the sawdust seems to shoot out the back um, or shoot out the back at an angle. And you'll probably see in some of the videos as we do it, it kind of goes everywhere. Um, even if you open the cap and cut not I wanna say that the majority of it doesn't come out through here. So you would think that because the dust collector port is near the beginning of the saw, it, it would actually collect more of it. But in testing, it didn't seem like that. Uh, maybe if you use the Makita one, you would think it may be better, I'm not sure. But um, I'm just letting you know the dust collection system didn't really make too much of a difference, okay? 
Um, the other thing is, if we look on the front right here, the um, spindle lock to change the blade out is right there. And if you look on the back, this right here is where you store that blade wrench, right? So this blade wrench, it's a wrench. It's not a hex Allen key like you would see in some of the smaller saws or whatnot, but this is a 13 millimeter curved wrench, right? So you can kind of see, it kind of allows you to get in here without it being caught pretty much on under the covers and stuff like that. But um, you can use an Allen key if you did want to use it on here. I think most people, or maybe most people I know at least, use just the socket adapter. Like I said, it's a 13 millimeter um, bolt if that's what you needed. So, in order to store this, go back here. You can store it that way, or you can store it this way. It will fit both ways. I would definitely recommend this way because it sticks it helps reduce the uh, catching of it, although nobody really had any chances of it catching. So, like I mentioned earlier, um, on most saws, or not most saws, but on some saws, you will see in the front is where you would have some kind of LED. It would either be here, right? Or it would be right under here on, on like, like the Milwaukee saw for Serene. It would be like right here. On this saw, none of that. There's no light. Um, the dust collection or the dust port, even if you're using it, or not using it, I mean, um, it will blow a lot of the air away from here, but it doesn't do it perfectly, um, but it doesn't collect too much here because you'll see all the dust usually comes out the back here. And then if you're cutting deep cuts, it will cut out the side and shoot out that way. You'll see it on some of the clips, okay? All right, so that test went by really fast and those numbers went by really fast. I hope you jotted them down. Just kidding, okay, we're gonna go over a recap. So in case you didn't catch all those numbers, we're gonna go uh, recap it real quick. But before we get into it, I do want to, uh, if you are looking at some of the footages that are gonna be shown, take a look at where the dust is coming out, especially because the dust is shooting out mostly on the back here. And it's also gonna be shooting out mostly at an angle once this back part fills up with sawdust, okay? And that's including using or the dust collection system. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and take a look at numbers. But just in case you're not familiar with our test track, we're gonna go over a quick recap. We do uh, rips of um, LP top notch subfloor 350, right? It's two, uh, 23, 30 seconds um, in thickness. And we do uh, three rips on two sheets and we do three rips on three sheets, okay? Um, and we take the average of those three. Why do we do the subfloor? Some people ask me. Um, we do the subfloor mainly because it's more uniform, it's, it's more stable, no matter where we get it from, it's gonna be the same brand. Um, and it's manufactured in a laboratory environment that kind of, you know, controls most of those parameters. So it's gonna be easier to get a relatively uh, same test track, um, I don't know, a couple years from now or whatever, even if we run out of the one that we're currently cutting, right? Although we did get a lot of it, so it will take us a while to, um, get rid of it. But anyways, the point is that that's what it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at numbers. So on the first run of double stack performance test, the number comes in at 3.24 seconds. Second run comes in at 3.18 seconds. Third run comes in at 3.13 seconds. Average to three, that's an uh, average of 3.18 seconds. Wow. Okay. That's generally pretty fast. Um, Taking a look at the triple stack test, um, the first run comes in at 5.08 seconds, second run comes in at 5.09 seconds, 
third run comes in at 5.09 seconds. You average the three, it comes out to 5.09. Well, what a surprise there, okay? So the way we generally gauge total performance is we, we just add the two averages up. And in this case, the two averages total up to a whopping 8.27 seconds. Wow, so that puts this saw in third place right behind the DeWalt Flexvolt DCS 577 using the two amp hour Flexvolt battery, okay? Or some people may confuse it with the six amp hour Flexvolt battery, but if you run that in Flexvolt mode, it's two, it's two amp hours, okay? So this saw is right between the uh, DeWalt DCS 577 and the Milwaukee M18 fuel rear handle saw with a 12 amp hour battery, okay? So this saw obviously cuts really well, cuts really fast. And one thing we did differently um, than on our test track is because this saw uses a 10 and a quarter inch blade, we could not use our standard test blade. Um, every time we test the saw, we test it with the Avanti 24 two seven and a quarter inch um, blade um, on all the saws, but obviously that's not gonna work here um, because this is a 10 and a quarter inch blade. Um, so that's just gonna be a little bit different, but just keep that in mind, okay? So um, obviously this saw is a high capacity saw. You're not gonna be getting or reaching for the saw on, I don't know, I wanna say every day at least maybe, unless you work with a big piece of lumber every day, but it's more of a special case, like you need to cut like some four by fours or four by sixes or, it won't cut a six by six in one pass, but um, larger pieces of engineered lumber that you can't cut with a single pass with the seven and a quarter inch blade, right? So this saw definitely has a special purpose. Is it for everyone? Probably not. Um, if you're only gonna buy one circular saw, should you buy this? I don't know, it really depends on what kind of work you're doing, right? If you need that higher capacity, it makes sense to get, okay? Um, and the higher capacity saws generally up until now have been corded, right? Like the saw squats and all that kind of stuff. But this one right here, um, is a cordless uh, version and uses a 10 and a quarter inch blade. I believe Makita uh, previously made, and they still may make it like a nine inch blade or a circular saw on their 30 inch or 36 volt X2 platform or whatnot. I'm not sure if that's still around, but I do believe they used to have that. But anyway, so like I said, this one definitely ups that capacity because it can cut three and three quarters at 90 degrees, okay? So that obviously is a great saw. So if you do look at the footage, t check out where the uh, dust is porting out here. Um, the dust collection port um, um, is hooked up and we definitely tested to make sure it was actually actively working. Um, it just doesn't capture too much of it, okay? So some of the other stuff that we've cut with this is LVL, LSL, uh, we've also did tests with stacking five pieces of LP top, that's 350, 23, 30 second subfloor, and, and it cuts through all five of them, okay? And it's not just like we just made one cut. We've made, um, after we ran the test to, to uh, get the numbers, we've made just a lot of cuts until um, the battery was wearing out, okay? It started blinking, like one bar, I think it's, is what really happened. But I mean, if you're on a job site, you're usually, even if you're production framing, you're not just, you just don't always have one guy ripping that much stuff all the time, right? There's usually measuring, breaks, and all that kind of stuff. So it can keep up, um, I would say, on a production site, even if you do have to cut a lot of that. Um, obviously, if you're doing that, you're gonna need more than one battery. Speaking of the battery, if you're gonna buy this saw and use this saw, use it with more than at least a, or use it with, um, anything bigger than at least a four amp hour battery, okay? Um, I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but the four amp hour batteries and higher will use 21700 cells, whereas the 2.5 and the two amp hour XGT batteries will use the 18650 cells. So the 21700 cells benefit this saw because it has a larger motor, it can push more of that current out and that's where a lot of that performance comes from, okay? So like I said, it cut through many sheets of, or five sheets of the um, subfloor multiple times. It will also cut um, larger pieces of LVL like we've shown earlier. Um, I think it was like three and five eighths total um, thickness of the LVL that it will cut easily, easily, okay? Um, not, you, you obviously hear it slow down a little bit, but it's not bogging down, okay? Um, it, it's not a problem. So um, it works really well. It's a great saw. It stacks up very well in our speed test on the uh, performance track. And what can I say? It's a great saw. If you need it, definitely get it. If you don't need it, don't get it. Or get it, even if you just want it, right? So um, it's a great saw. Can I recommend it? Of course. Is this the only saw on the market, I think, in its class being cordless? I, at this time of the recording of the video, I think so. Could be wrong, but anyways, um, 
it's on their XGT platform. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out and stay tuned for more videos like this because we're obviously um, testing more stuff and uploading more videos. But hope this video helped you guys out. Have a nice day. Take care and we'll see you guys next time.